welcome to another Kirsty Knits and Sews podcast. If you have come and watched before, welcome back. And if you are new and you're just stumbling across, welcome. Hope you enjoy what I have to talk about today and show you. My name is Kirsty of the Kirsty Knits and Sews podcast, and you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Kirsty Knits and Sews. I'll put links down below. Um, I will let you know that all of the projects that I talk about today have Ravelry pages with links to the patterns and the yarn that I've used. So if you have questions, you can go follow the links that I'll put below to the Ravelry page and have a look there. If you have questions, so please ask and I will do my best to answer them. I am living in Poland. I'm an Australian who's living in Poland and I love all crafting. Today for the first time I'm actually sitting in my crafting corner to record. You can see my sewing machine, overlocker, threads for them, cutting mat, scrap baskets and things, cutting rulers. Um, but don't be alarmed, most of my podcast is about knitting. Um, I find it easier to show knitting, which is more of a long-term project, and talk about that than sewing, which can often be done in 24 hours. I will quickly tell you what I am wearing, though. These are the Greer Overalls by Hey June Handmade. I made these ones myself. Sorry, you're not going to get to see the bottom. Um, and these were a 24-hour project. Super easy, very clear instructions. I made a couple of mistakes. But those mistakes were not the instructions problem <laughs> or fault. That's because my beautiful machine here is a new to me machine. And I misread, I thought it said three eighths of an inch and it was actually five eighths of an inch. And so I had a quarter inch wrong for my seam allowances for half the project. So that was my bad, but that's okay. These things happen, they still fit. I know for next time to make them properly. So anyway, um, but I really love them, they're very comfortable. I'll also link the pattern for Hey June Handmade down below. Now there are a couple of changes to the way that I'm doing this aside from my location. Um, hopefully it's a bit more interesting for you all to see my location. Um, I am going to try and not edit this video. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The main one is that if it's an hour long podcast, then I record the podcast and then I have to rewatch it doing editing bits, but also rewatch it to take out bits where I ramble too much or whatever. But I only have one morning a week where I can do things while my daughter naps and my son is at preschool. And so that where the house is quiet and I can have that kind of focus to either record or to edit. And so what's been happening the last couple of times is I've recorded on a Tuesday and then the following Tuesday I've edited and uploaded the video. And that just means that there's a week between me recording and you being able to see it. And so I'm going to try and record it today, do the little bit of editing at the beginning and end that needs to be done and the show notes and upload it today or tomorrow. Wouldn't that be amazing? Um, but it means that I might be a little bit more rambly, um, but there shouldn't be interruptions because my daughter's asleep, my husband's at preschool, sorry, bleh, my son is at preschool, my husband is working. Um, and I will also just say, as can cans, that's not from dying. I am in the middle of making beetroot relish. And so that was from grating the beetroots yesterday. I don't care if my hands get stained. It's fine. So, welcome and let's get into things. Today I am drinking, I believe it's Earl Grey tea, but in my special new mug. Now this is an acquisition since the last one, but I'm going to tell you now because I'll be drinking out of it the whole time. I should mention it's not Sunday, it's Tuesday and I think it's the 19th of July, but I ordered this mug from Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady Co. And it arrived last week and I've been drinking out of it almost non-stop. It is huge. It is at least one and a half times bigger than most of my other cups. I did drink it on Sunday and I know that it's not Scrappy Sunday today, but it's still a yarn-related 
months, I thought it would be cool to show you and drink from it. I'm a big fan of black tea. Loose leaf, black tea, made in a teapot, no milk, no sugar, no lemon, just black tea. People find me weird. This is how my dad drank it, this is how I learned to drink it. Anyway, I've been going through teas in Poland and trying to find ones that I like best and it's working. I am getting a list. All right, on to finished objects. I have two finished objects to show you today, both of them socks. So they shouldn't take too long to show you, but check it out. I love these socks and I'm super excited that now I'm showing you, I can start wearing them. This was, all right, yarn first, the yarn. The main color is a Burt Micro self striping in the colorway purple neon or neon purple and I'll just show you again how amazing is that the Burt colorway is the white that has the bright speckles in it and then it's micro striking with the neon purple I absolutely love it the mini contrasting heel toe and a little bit on the top is actually from a different dyer it's Vera Yarns Designs on Instagram she has a website as well and I got one of her neon mini packs so six minis 20 grams each and I got the neons and the pastels the neons had five neon colors and a black the pastels had five pastel colors that corresponded and a white so I actually got 12 minis of hers which I've been loving using for heels toes and cuffs they are a hundred percent high twist sock yarn um, I have noticed on another pair that I've used high twist sock yarn that wasn't um, that wasn't didn't have any nylon that it's been feeling a bit but it wasn't hers um, so I'll wear these and I'll if I find them start feeling I'll let you know but I love 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 the colors and the way that it works together um, in terms of pattern, I didn't really use a pattern for this one. My go-to sock pattern is the Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop by Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady. I will recommend that to anyone who is learning to knit socks. I did that recently and my friend has knit one and a half socks already. And it is great and I learnt largely to knit socks with it because she has a very basic vanilla sock pattern but then a video tutorial that goes along with that. So when you get to the heel stitch, um, heel flap and gusset and different things, she has a video where she shows you exactly what to do and how to do it. Brilliant. So that's how I learned to do socks was by watching Kay Litton, um, Kay Litton's tutorials and reading her vanilla sock pattern. But I can't really say that this is following her vanilla sock pattern because it's a two by two cuff. Her vanilla sock pattern does not have a two by two cuff. It's a 60 stitch foot. Her vanilla sock pattern does not have a 60 stitch foot. It is a rounded toe, which she does have, but I've modified it for the 60 stitch foot. And it has an afterthought heel, which I did use Kay Litton's tutorial on an afterthought heel, which again will be linked below, to do the afterthought heel, but it's not part of her pattern. So, I'm saying that these socks are patternless because they're vanilla socks and I've meshed together things from different places. Um, but I love them and I'm looking forward to trying them because I have yet to find my perfect sock fit. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the heel flap and gusset because I find the heel flap comes up high enough that it is actually too high for that bend in my can see there you go that little bend I find that the heel flap comes up too high for me so I either need to do a shorter heel flap or find a different heel so I'm looking at the finding a different heel at the moment and we'll see how that goes but I'm looking forward to trying these on and I'm a huge fan of this micro self strapping by Tracy of what must have made did I say that micro self strapping is by Tracy of what must have made a UK dyer 
this is Viridiana's designs and Irish dyer. Or at least they live in the UK and Ireland. So I am presuming that that's where they're from. Um, lovely socks. And these ones were finished on the 1st of July. So I think by the time I uploaded the last video, these were already finished, even though I was just starting the second in the video. And that's part of why I'm trying the no edit thing. But I should stop rambling if I'm going to do that, maybe. All right, my second pair of socks that are finished. Oh, I did them um, on 2.5 millimeter Chowsy circulars, and they are sock pair number four for Summer Sock Camp. But I've yet to upload any of my Summer Sock Camp socks onto the cabins in Kay Litton's Rubbery. I should do that. Summer Sock Camp, really quick. 28th of May until the end of August, Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady hosts Summer Sock Camp. Basically, knit all the socks. They have to be hand knit, no cranks or anything like that, or machines or looms, I don't believe. Hand knit socks, any size, two pairs, started after the, on or after the 28th of May, finished by the 31st of August. August has 31 days and you can enter them in and she has prizes and different things but a lot of it is the conversations and the fun and seeing people knit socks which are the perfect summer knit. I carry socks with me everywhere I go. All right next pair of socks that are done and these ones again are too long for my sock blockers so excuse the floppy toe. These ones So yarn first, Zabable Crazy in their fingering weight. It is a two ply twist, which you can't see too well in this one. Like it kind of comes out as a mull look. It is just a two ply, um, but because this is number 2428 mud pack, um, and it's just a whole bunch of braids, you kind of can't see maybe there on the toe a bit. Um, the marling look because um, it just kind of is a gradient. I have come to really like this yarn. The first time I used it I wasn't a huge fan because it was thinner than I had expected and that's why I went down to the 2.25 millimeter. I'm yet to have anyone who I've knit socks for out of this receive those socks so I don't know if downsizing with the thinner yarn is making the socks too small. But it would be perfect for me. So we'll see. Um, but these ones, so Zabble Ball Crazy and then the uh, 2428 Mud Pack and then the contrasting heels are uh, Zabble Ball Crazy 2475 Background Noise, which is another gradient but darker colours with black. Um, and these Afterthought Heel, again following the Crazy Sock Ladies tutorial for that. Um, but it is a size medium of her vanilla socks, but I did sub the two by two ribbing because I always do two by two ribbing. I don't know if anyone else finds this one by one ribbing because you're flipping the yarn back and forward every stitch, it just takes twice as long. And so I find two by two ribbing, I prefer it because it's just a bit quicker and I actually don't enjoy knitting ribbing for the most part. So I'm like, let's get that done quickly. Um, and these, yeah, everything else will be according to the pattern. Um, this is pair number five for Summer Sock Camp. I should say, information will be on Ravelry, but for these ones, it's a 10 row cuff, a 15 row heel, oh, sorry, leg, and then I marked the afterthought heel, and then just did the foot for length. All right. Now, that is it for finished objects. I have done a lot of knitting, but I have not yet finished anything else. So, I'm gonna go through whips now, works in progress, but I'm only gonna touch on the ones that I have made progress on since the last podcast. I am at the point where I have more whips than I am working on regularly, 
but I also have a few that I'm really trying to get done and get finished and I will get into why when I get to those whips. But it means that I've been really focusing for the most part. Although I have had a few curbstones that weren't planned, just spare of the moment decided to have some. Okay, so my first whip is a long time whip. I had this one when I moved to Poland, which was nine months ago. So it's a long, long, long time whip, but I have been working on it. The, it is a sock. Ta-da! Um, the reason it is such a long time whip, I'm doing this continental. I'm an English style knitter, I throw, but, if I hold it up that way, um, but I wanted to learn continental because when I do colour work, stranded colour work, I do hold one English style, one continental, and so I wanted to practice that. Um, but I've also, I know that some people can be much quicker knitting continental and I like knitting and I like knitting quickly. So my intention was to learn how to knit continental so I could knit quicker. Now I'm quite quick at English knitting, particularly stocking like most people. Um, I'm very quick. Well, I, I consider myself quick. I'm nowhere near that speed with continental yet. I'm improving, I'm getting better, but there's a long way to go. And so I work on it a little bit and it's a nice portable project because it's on nine inch circulars. Woohoo! Um, but I just, I work on it when I can. It's not a priority to get done. It's for me, so there's no deadline. Um, but that's why it's taking so long. So this is the first sock of the pair and it doesn't count towards summer sock camp anyway because I cast it on nine months ago. Definitely not since May 28th. Um, but this is the yarn. It is Sea Turtle Brief by Maximo Yarns. He has just been showing, he just had a stall at Bendigo Wool, and, Wool Show. So I'm not certain, but I'm presuming he has had a shop update or will have a shop update with a lot more yarn of stock that he didn't sell at the Bendigo Sheep. And wool show. So if you're interested in yarn by him, go have a look. Again, shops will be linked below of any yarn guys that I mention. Um, but I absolutely love how, like the depth of colour in here, but also how random it is. It's just beautiful. Um, I absolutely love it. This is my second pair of socks made by yarn that he has dyed and the other pair was very similar in the way that it just was so random and so many colours and depths of colour. Highly recommend. Um, so these are again <laughs> renewal socks by Crazy Sock Lady, Caitlin of the Crazy Sock Lady. I am, I use the um, vanilla socks on Magic Loop pattern but I've just adapted it for 9 inch circulars and I did the heel on the 9 inch circulars. I will have to change for the toe, um, but I actually quite liked doing heel on nine inch circulars. I didn't think, it was a bit awkward, but I didn't mind it. Um, what else do you need to know about this? Chowgu nine inch circulars. Um, I think that's it. I can show you, this is the yarn before it's knit up. Just beautiful. Loving, loving, loving it. Alright, and I have mentioned this before. I make all of my own bags. So I'll show you some of them today. Um, just cute fish and gnomes on that side. The two top ones, they have the Ross. The bottom one is Anna Maria Horner. Um little handle inside, some lined fabric. This one is really too small to be a sock bag. Now the ball of yarn is slightly smaller, it does fit, but at the beginning it was a stretch. Um, but I had some zips that were very small and so I just decided to make some very small bags. Um, I am considering doing a tutorial for how to make project bags. So if you're interested in that, comment below.
below. I know there are a lot of tutorials out there and I don't really want to reinvent the wheel and I don't really have time to reinvent the wheel. Um, so if you're interested in knowing where they are, I can always link some down below. Um, but I do, like I, I have changed what I do when I now don't use a pattern. So I have more of a, a recipe for how I make the bag. So if you're interested, let me know. There are things in my recipe that I do for a purpose, which obviously people can change, but it's helpful to know why someone does things one way. Um, so anyway, if you're interested, let me know and I will try and record something in my beautiful sewing area. I, I really just like all the craft. All the craft. Give me a craft and I'll do it. All right. My second whip, which I actually forgot about earlier today, is, do I have the tag? I do. The yarn is Opal Gutenacht Gefkichten, or something to that effect. Um, it is a grey, mottled grey. Um, it is a self-patterning which is pretty cool. And I bought it when I needed some more, um, more socks, more colors for the men in my life because not all the men in my life will wear really bright colored socks. Um, these ones have changed who they're for though. They are now for my husband. So that's obviously really pretty without a sock blocker on, but I'm not going to put it on sock blocker at the moment. You can see the self-patterning going on there. You can see that I still have all of my stitch markers on the front, keeping track of where I'm up to. And my second one is just a little baby sock, just that much of the leg. And if I hold them up together, you can see they're not actually going to match. I generally don't worry about going through and trying to make the socks match, particularly when, like, overall it's just such a, uh, like, there is a clear beginning to the pattern, but it's just three stripes. If it's a very particular rainbow something, then I may, but, I don't know, I figure, why waste the yarn? I should say, it wouldn't be wasted. I would put it into another project or a scrappy sock but I prefer to have bigger chunks than lots of little ones. Um, okay, so these ones I'm doing on 2.5 millimeter Addy sock needles, which means that rather than nine inch circulars that have two needles the same size, this one has one slightly longer and one slightly shorter. Um, and it just means that you have a little bit more of a needle to grip when you're weaving in and out. And the one that you're knitting off doesn't need to be very long. You've just got to have a little bit of a grip on it. The other one, I prefer having a bit longer. So I find these easier to knit English style with. The nine inch circulars, I really struggle to knit English style. Um, maybe one day I'll get better at that. But at the moment, I prefer the sock needles for that. Um, oh, the yarn colorway is good enough, uh, 9895, I don't know what color that is other than green. Um, so these ones have been getting a bit of love, although I lost them, and by lost them I mean they were up here on a very messy table at the time, and so I couldn't find them. And so I wasn't able to work on them, but these ones shouldn't take too much longer because I don't have many vanilla socks at the moment. I have these ones and my continental ones on the go, which means they're the ones that are going to be taken and worked on when I'm traveling. Although I was thinking maybe I'll cast on another pair of vanilla socks on Magic Loop because Magic Loop, I just find so easy. So minor. Addy sock needles, I'm also finding reasonably minor. So maybe a week. Anyway, alright, so they are my sock whips mostly.
mostly. I'm going through widths in terms of oldest to newest. So the grey ones I cast on on May 28th for the beginning of Crazy Sock of Summer Sock Camp. I cast on six pairs of socks that day. I have finished three, four. I think I've finished four. I've frogged one and I have that one left. The one that I frogged I'll probably recast on, but maybe not. Maybe I'll just leave it for another, another time. Anyway, so I'm working through socks because again, perfect summer knit. Small, you can carry them around. I do a lot of knitting. Well, a lot. I do some knitting on buses if I go on buses without the kids. Sometimes with the kids, I can still knit. Waiting, doctor's offices, chatting with friends. Knitting is fun. All right, this next um, width, work in progress, is a very, very, very exciting one. Now, I spoke about it last week. I only just cast it on and it was in the naughty corner because a few reasons. It was basically my own fault, but I'm so excited. So let me start with the pattern. So the pattern is not released yet. I'm test knitting this pattern for Renata of Comfort Zone Knits. And this is just the black and white of what it looks like. It is much prettier in colour. Um, this is a test knit. Renata of Comfort Zone Knits is a Polish designer. And so her patterns are released in Polish and English. And I'm test knitting the English version. Because my Polish isn't that great yet. But I have already completed a jumper. Which you haven't seen here. Because I'm not allowed to show you the finished projects until the pattern is released. Um... But I have finished a complete jumper as part of this test knit. But she extended the date for when the test knit was due, when I'd already basically completed my jumper. So I knew that I had time to do a second one and I was toying with the idea and I had some yarn which I knew would be perfect and I bought some more yarn to go with it so it would be even more perfect. And then she found a problem with the pattern and so she changed bits of the pattern to make it well, to fix the problem. But a lot of people, myself included, had already finished the part of the pattern that she changed. So I said, hey, if it's helpful, I can knit a second one. Because I have the time, I have the yarn, I wanted to do it anyway. So why not? And she said, look, if you can, that would be great. Um, and so other people have also been able to go back to that point and start it again. Um, but for me, it wasn't really an imposition because I was planning to do it anyway. So I will start with the yarn. I have this beautiful, beautiful colorway. This is called Slate. It is by Vera Yarns Design. It is on her 100% Merino single fingering. And I do have, I believe, in here, I keep the tags for these in the center. And so I don't want to take it out and lose the spot. But I have already finished one ball. And so I believe I have a tag in here. Maybe. Uh -huh, I see it. I see it. I see it. There we go. So this is her thing. Very Yarns Designs. And it is 100% superwash merino. Um, Hand Dyed in Ireland colorway slate. It is a one ply, a singles, and it is beautiful. Now, I know singles are a bit more delicate, or at least I understand they're a little bit more delicate. I've never had a problem with them so far. Um, but this pattern called for a four ply or fingering and a mohair held double. So the mohair one I'm using is Drops Kid Silk in their Jins colorway number 27. And so those two together make this beautiful, beautiful fabric. Look at that. Now, this is what I have done so far. So 
So I'm working on a sleeve and I have done some of the body. It is not as long as it will be, but I knew that I was cutting it short with the amount of length of the singles that I had. So I wanted to do a sleeve, make sure that I have enough for both sleeves before I go back and do the body. It will have puffed sleeves. There you go. Um, but it is, I mean, it's luxuriously soft. It is beautiful. But also that lace work just on the yoke, it's just stunning. The other one that I have, I knit with the positive ease. I believe it was the positive ease that was recommended in the pattern, which was a really nice, warm, comfy sweater. But it was what I would call oversized. And so a lot of it was the yoke was quite large. So even though the ease was what was recommended around the bust, the yoke seemed really big. Um, but that's what the pattern update has changed. So I believe that if I knit the same one again, it wouldn't feel quite so oversized um, in the recommended whatever. But this one with the recommended ease, but this one I'm actually doing with less than the recommended ease because of yarn availability. So I'm actually doing this one for my actual bust size, I believe. So it should have no or very little positive ease, maybe even slight negative ease. But I was okay with having a more fitted body. Um, but I have upsized the arm so that the arm will be a bit bigger and a bit more flowy. Um, yeah, so I'm absolutely loving it. I'm looking forward to being able to wear this. Just have a look at the colours in there. That is getting a little bit blown out. It is darker than is necessarily showing. You can see my fingers are quite blown out too. But you can see the different colours in there. It is amazing. So what I was saying before about my own fault, the pattern calls for a crochet provisional cast on. So you do use a crochet hook and a knitting needle to cast on however many stitches and you knit up and then you pick up those stitches and you knit down. And the first crochet provisional cast on I found was awful. And I did it and I found it the most painful cast on I think I'd ever done. And so I went, I'm not doing that again. So then when I cast on this one the first time, I looked for a provisional cast on that was not crochet. And I found three. And after watching the first one, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just do that. And it was so painful because it meant you needed a long tail. And so you were, like it wasn't a long tail cast on, but you needed a long tail. But because you were wrapping it around, you had to keep pulling the long tail out. And because this is held double, it's a mohair and a singles, and they just kept getting tangled. And it was, I was pulling my hair out. And then I found joining it in the round difficult because the provisional cast on was basically just a line like it was, it was almost like waist yarn through loops, um, which meant that it was really hard to figure out if it was actually the right, right way around or not. And then I made a mistake and I ended up with too few stitches at one point and I was like, do I just downsize or go up? And then I realized that I was gonna run out of yarn if I stayed at the size I was trying to do. So I was like, I'm just gonna frog it. Oh no, I just dropped the yarn on the ground. I was like, I'm just gonna frog it and start again and I'm so glad I did because then I found another provisional cast on which was so good I think it was by Pearl Soho I'm not certain I will link it below under crochet provisional cast on but it was so good like it was simple it was helpful um it was so great but the only thing I will say is I was I don't know if I was too lazy or if my daughter was asleep, but I didn't go get the right size crochet hook for the needles that I'm using. Instead, I used a handy tool, which I got from Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady. Do I have one in here? Um, I do. This is a handy tool. So it's a crochet hook at this end 
and a point at this end and it means you can use it to pick up dropped stitches or use it as a needle if you need it briefly. Um, it's just a really handy little thing but it's I would say 2.5 maybe 3 millimeters and I'm using 4.5s for this project. And so when I went to pick up that provisional cast on, which I'd done with this, not my proper size, it was so tight. Now it hasn't affected the finished look. I can't even, without counting rows, I can't tell which one was the provisional cast on row. But picking them up was so painful. And I ended up picking it up on 3.75 chow goos that were really pointy and then knitting off them onto the correct size which obviously isn't as pointy. Um, at ease, I find the point is not as pointy. Gosh, that's a pink yarn. Um, so anyway, it ended up okay. The jumper is not ruined for my laziness slash daughter sleeping while I'm knitting. Um, but just a word to the wise, if you're doing a crochet provisional cast on, make sure that the hook size is close to... The needle size. If you don't have the exact one, that's fine, but make sure it's close because that will make a difference to the size of the loops that you're keeping. Anyway, all that to say, it was my own silliness, pretty much all the things that I found frustrating with this. But I would say it's probably an intermediate pattern because there are so many things that can go wrong. Um, it's not colour work, like I wouldn't recommend colour work for a first time knitter because then you're trying to tension two threads and different things. But I would still say this is probably an intermediate. If you're an adventurous beginner and you just want to jump in and you don't really care about learning lots of new things at once, go for it. But if you're someone who knitting itself is a new thing and you don't want to have lots of other new things to add on to that, I wouldn't recommend this pattern straight off the bat. But I would recommend this pattern. It is just beautiful. Um, and Renata of Comfort Zone Knits has some other patterns. Um, one of them is a free pattern for a t-shirt, which I've already downloaded, but I'm actually planning to knit it using the Polish pattern, not the English pattern, because I want to learn to knit in Polish. I mean, knitting's the same. I want to learn to read knitting patterns in Polish. And so I thought I would do that with one of her patterns. Um, yeah. Anyway, just a bit of fun. I have really enjoyed this and I'm very excited to get the whole sweater finished and be able to start wearing it when it gets cooler. It's not cool enough to wear yet. Um, is there anything else with that? I'm doing them... Yeah, 4.5 millimeter. Oh, it will be, or it should be released next month in August. So I need to have the test knit finished by the end of July, uh, which shouldn't be a problem. It's all stocking, stitch and ribbing to go. Um, but I need to get it finished, take photos, and then hopefully next month it'll be released and you all can give it a go. Um, this bag, is a Christmas bag, but it's about the right size. Um, Anna Green Gables fabric that I made. Love, love, love it. I don't even remember. Oh, inside has a writing. And whenever I remember, handles in a bag. It's so easy, so helpful. Um, oh, the last bag, I didn't talk about it, but I find this hilarious. This is a cotton drill that I bought from Spotlight. I don't know if it was in lockdown or before lockdown, but I made this bag, I'm pretty sure, in lockdown or before lockdown um, for toys for my son because we didn't really have great storage, so I put some bags together. And then I needed knitting bags and I stole it. And I haven't replaced bags for his toys. They have boxes and things now. He's not wanting it, but that's why I have a cool dinosaur bag. Um, okay. The next pattern was one of those, I'm just going to cast it on now things. 
This is the Night Shift Shawl by and Andre and Andrea Andrea Andrea. I actually don't know how she says the name. I always say Andrea. Anyway, um, Andrea Maori. Um, she is a designer. Let me see if I have. Uh huh. Um, and her designing name is Dre Renee Knits. So, Andrea probably. Dre Renee Knits. Um, so this is the shawl that I am knitting. I've wanted to do this shawl maybe a year, maybe two. And it is designed with spin cycle yarns, which is an expensive yarn anyway. I'm not sure if it's hand spun or not, but it's definitely, um, like it's one that the pr manufacturing process is involved, um, but it is absolutely beautiful. But it means that the price point is quite high and way out of my budget. And so I've been looking for a long time for a yarn that would have a similar look to that. And I found some online that I was like, yes. And now that I've got them, I'm like, yeah. It'll be all right. I'm gonna keep knitting the shawl because I love it. But I have since found out that you can do it with any weight yarn because this is what happens when you don't read the pattern first and you try and find the right weight yarn. Um, you can do it with any weight yarn and just use the same recipe that she puts at the beginning of the pattern to do. So I might end up making another one with fingering weight yarn because I can. But for the moment, this is what I have done. It's just a little baby whip. Um, it is on waist yarn because I used the um, I used the needle to do a gauge swatch. Um, but that is what I have done so far. And so you can see the background colour is staying the same at the moment, but there are three different colours here: a dark green, a light green, and an orange that I'm going through so far. So this has been, like I think this is one evening worth of knitting. Um, quite simple. I don't think I need the pattern anymore. Like it is a recipe. If you do the steps enough, you can learn. I'll probably have to remind myself when I go back to it, but um, it is a, a very easy to remember recipe, but so effective. Um, and the yarn that I'm using is Winter Glow by Hobby. It is 51% wool, 49% acrylic, which is possibly why I'm not a huge fan. Um, but I have to somewhat like it because I have a buttload. So originally the pattern calls for six... Um, Six fifty gram skeins. These are two hundred grams each, because I didn't know. Well, no, because these were the one, the yarns that I thought would work, and so I just grabbed a skein of each. I knew that there would be too many, too much yarn, um, but I did it anyway. And now I'm gonna have heaps of yarn left over for yarn that I'm not a huge fan of. But I figure I can always do kids jumpers because acrylic for kids jumpers is great. Um, or acrylic wool blend for a kids jumper is great. Um, but also blankets. I love blankets. I love knitting blankets. I love crocheting blankets. Maybe a crochet cord in a corner. A kids blanket. There are options. So the yarn's not going to go to waste. But it's just not as an enjoyable knit as I was hoping. And I think part of the reason is that the blue isn't as deep as I was hoping. Um, you can see here the green kind of has a much deeper, almost jewel-like tone, which is what I was hoping the blue would have. Um, and so, again, buying yarn online, colorways, is hard. But where I'm living, there is not a local yarn store. There, or if, it, if there is, I have not found it yet. There are Pasmanterias who have some yarn, um, it's like a haberdashery store, they have some yarn, but the ones near me don't generally stock the yarn that I would use. 
and so I buy online from other personal carriers in Poland or from other places in the world or I buy yarn and dye it myself which is fun um anyway so that's my situation here I have plenty of yarn so I'm actually not buying much at all at the moment and I have another incentive to not buy yarn at the moment which I was going to talk about at the end but I may as well tell you now um Druta's Lot there is a Polish knitting festival happening in six weeks time I want to say and I'm going we were going on a family holiday around that time anyway and found out that it was literally on the way um and so we just made sure that the beginning of our holiday coincided with being able to be at this place at that time and now I get to go to the knitting festival and find out about all the Polish dyers and people who have yarn shops in Poland and where they are and what they stop see yarn in person and buy yarn in person which I mean buying yarn in person is always so exciting but after not by the time I get there it'll be oh I was gonna say a year because we'll have been in Poland for almost a year but I was in lockdown before I came here and I'm trying to think the last time I was actually in a yarn store in person did a lot of online shopping during lockdown. So it may even be two years since I've been in a yarn store. Mm, maybe 18 months. I did go into a yarn store maybe 18 months ago to get needles, but it was at the time when we were already meant to be social distancing. So while lockdown wasn't in place, it wasn't a browse and enjoy, it was a go get and leave. So yeah, it's been almost two years since I've bought yarn in a yarn store. Oh boy. Anyway, so I'm very excited about that. Um, I have some friends who are gonna come with me. One friend from Australia, you know who you are, who's flying over to visit, and so she'll come with me. A friend from here. Um, and there will be other people that I've been talking to online who'll be there as well. So maybe I'll be able to catch up with them. Yeah. So that's another reason I'm wanting to learn to read Polish patterns is because I'm presuming maybe I'm wrong. There'll be some Polish patterns available or something, but also, um, they have some workshops. And so if I want to do a workshop in Polish, I'll need to understand Polish knitting lingo. We'll see. I may not do a workshop this year, or I may do it as a language learning opportunity without really expecting to learn. But one of the workshops is about how to get your perfect fit for a sweater, which I'm very interested in. We'll see. All right, so that's a nice shift shawl. Just a baby. I wasn't planning to cast that on. I'm part of a knit along hosted by lovietchka.pazmantaria on Instagram, so I will put her handle below. But I hadn't cast it on and I wasn't necessarily intending to cast it on, but I did because I had an impulse one night. I went, whatever, why not? And I did. All right, this next one, that one doesn't have a bag. This next one does. This yarn here, I think was from Amity Textiles in Victoria. And the Hedgehog uh, Ruby Star Society, I cannot remember where I got it from, but I do remember I looked high and low and got some of the last bit that I could possibly find in Australia. So I don't know if you'll still be able to find it. I got it in grey, in pink, and in navy. And I love, love, love them. I really like hedgehogs and echidnas. So these are echidnas, I should say. They're Australian, they're echidna echidnas but I really like hedgehogs as well. So this is pattern by Dana Ronitz called the Twisty Staircase Socks. And there is a black and white. So it's just a textured sock. You can do it in pattern or in a tonal. I am doing it in Christmas yarn. So this one is interesting. I won this pattern last year during Summer Sock Camp. 
And so I thought I would knit it this year during Summer Sock Camp. And Jana Knits also has a Christmas in July knit along. So I was like, win-win. So this is the yarn that I'm using. It is Christmas Sock Yarn by Hobby. Where is the tag? I do like the tag. How cute is that? It has Christmas trees, Santa, sleigh. Um, it is number two, colour number two. It is a 73% wool, 25% polyamid, 2% poly ester. Um, Christmas sock wool glitter. And this is what I've got so far. It's just a little cuff. Now someone did ask me about it, is it scratchy? And I would say yes. Um, I mean, it's not going to stop me from wearing it, but like doing that, if I did that too hard, it would hurt. Like it is quite a scratchy yarn. And I think like it's, it's a bit of a rustic looking yarn anyway, but the glitter definitely, it is a thin light strand of shiny, whatever it is, polyester, I presume based on the label. But it means that when that flat part gets twisted, it scratches. I have used shiny yarn and I have a jumper made of shiny yarn that my sister made me that is not scratchy. So I know you can get not scratchy yarn. Um, I bought this based on the colour online. I wasn't really thinking about the feel. I expect yarn, like I expect hobby yarn to not be as soft as indie dyed yarn um, that's just my expectation and so I'm not disappointed by it it is more scratchy maybe than I was hoping but that's okay but the thing that I'm waiting to see I've only done like two repeats of the pattern I'm sorry not even repeats of the pattern but like little bits and it's not really showing up super well because of the glitter so I think if I had tonal without the glitter it would be fine but the glitter is kind of overpowering it. So I'm interested to see when I get out of the really deep red into the other colors, how much the pattern actually comes out. But I'm gonna keep knitting it. It is another fairly easy to remember pattern. So it's not gonna be hard to knit when I start focusing on it. But at the moment I have other TV knitting, so it's not getting worked on and I'm not at the point with it where I would take it on a bus or something. So that's fine. Um, I'm knitting them on 2.25 millimeter chow goo circulars. Now, I mentioned before, actually, I'm gonna have a drink first. Oh, it's dark. I mentioned before that there are some things coming up that I'm trying to get things off the needle for. So the first thing is obviously the Maggie pullover which is the blue one that I'm making. I'm trying to get finished because the test knit is finishing. And it is my second one, so if I don't have the bottom bound off or whatever by the time it launches, it's not gonna be an, an issue. Um, I know that it would be fine, but I wanna get it done so that I can send the photos in, have it finished, and have the mental headspace that that creates from having projects finished. Um, because on the 1st of August, my sister and I are casting on the sea glass sweater. Now, I'm hoping that it will work the way that we're hoping because I sent her a parcel of scrap yarn and she sent me a parcel of scrap yarn and she posted it by air and it arrived and I posted it by sea and it hasn't arrived yet. Even though I sent it maybe a month before she did. So I'm hoping and praying that that arrives before the 1st of August so she has a full complement of colours with which to knit the sea glass sweater. But we have both done swatches. So if you want to see my sister's one, her Instagram is Melinda Knits and Sews, and I will put that down below. Uh, but here are my swatches. And I do say swatches. Where did that go? There it is. So, I should say, I've done colour work knitting and I've done, like I've done colour work yokes 
and things. I've never done a full fair aisle sweater or cardigan, which I do have on my to-do list, my dream. But the sea glass sweater is a colorwork sweater. It's one by one colorwork. That is my first test swatch. So my, I mean, even look at the back. How pretty is that? My, oh, maybe I do want to make it double sided. That's gorgeous. Um, sorry. So my one by one color work is not brilliant at the moment. Um, I've noticed an improvement even just with knitting the swatches, but they recommend when you're doing the test swatches to put colors so you can see an idea of what the let me do it that way what it would look like if you have purple for the cuff and whatever if you have blue for the cuff um but this is my first one and it was too small like almost hilariously too small and i'd already done it a size up from what the pattern recommended because i misread it so there was that um, I loved the look of the fabric and the scrap, but I needed the heat gauge. So I did another one with a different colour to see if I liked it. And then a different colour again to see if I liked it. Now this one, a heat gauge. Look at the back. So pretty. Um, and I need to decide how I'm going to finish all the ends in this sweater because that's kind of important. But this one, I don't have enough to do as the entire cuff. This one, I do have enough to do for all the colors, colors and cuffs. And yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good on me. I like blue. Um, this one, I thought was too dark. This one, I was debating. But I don't think I like the colour on me. But then I found this colour. And so then I was like, if I put that, I just need another little test swatch and put that there. I was like, maybe I'd have a green. Which I think would look really nice on me. And so now I'm debating, do I do a blue or a green? What do you reckon? Blue. I'm really struggling because I really, really, really like the look of the green, but I also really, really like the look of the blue. And they are, like tonally, they are a similar colour, like it's a bit of a brighter blue. So this is the purple that I was debating, which I've now, I think, eliminated. I wasn't sure I had enough of that anyway. This is the blue. It is a hand-dyed um, DK sock yarn by Daffodil Road Yarns and this is the green which is a tweed by so it's got a bendigo uh, sorry bamboo wool mix but it's by bendigo wool mills so I've got 200 grams of this 100 grams of this plenty of either but I just can't decide like that color is really good for me that color is really good for me I don't know. If you have a preference, pop it below. I have, I think, decided not to go for purple. But anyway, we want to cast this on. Um, I think in the colour here, I'm thinking more of, I'm leaning towards the teal. Hmm, maybe I'm doing teal. Anyway, if you have a preference, let me know and let me know why. Um, I have toyed with the idea of doing two. I have enough scrap yarns to do two. So if you think I should do two, tell me that as well. Um, but that is my next project, the sea glass sweater. We'll be casting it on the 1st of August. If you have been wanting to do the sweater and want some um, company to do it, then let us know and we can put together an informal knit along. But definitely my sister and I are doing it and we will do it together at the same time. So much fun. 
The other thing that is coming up, which I'm pretty excited about, is the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. I did that last year for the first time and I loved it. It was, I mean, it had a lot of techniques I'd never done before, but he has step-by-step -step tutorial videos that he releases every week with the pattern. So if you've never done a mystery knit along before, it is a mystery knit along. His one goes for a month. Every week he releases another part with information about like a written pattern, but also a video tutorial. So if you ever get to a point where I have no idea what he means, you can go to the video tutorial and watch that part. And I found it super helpful. Um, my sister and I did it last year. I just moved to Poland. And so it was a really nice long distance thing, along with another friend, Rosie, the three of us were doing it together. Um, this year, my mum wants to jump in. She, oh, her and dad both taught me to knit and my sister to knit. And so she was like, hey, I can do it too. So the three of us are going to do it. I mean, it's a huge mystery knit along. Lots and lots and lots of people do this every year. Um, but the three of us are going to do it and encourage each other along the way. Um, and our plan is to hand dye our yarn this year. So for the Stephen West mystery knit along, usually in September, he releases... Or like he opens the pattern on Ravelry. So you can buy the pattern or at least you can sign up for the knit along. Um, there's no actual pattern at that point. And just there will be information about how much yarn you need, how many colours, what, um, basically what materials you need to do the mystery knit along. And his shop, which I can't remember the name of, Stephen and Penelope? maybe his shop then puts together a whole lot of kits that you can then purchase to do the mystery knit along or you can find your own yarn. A lot of other dyers and shops around the world will also put together kits so that you can purchase because Stephen and Penelope is in Amsterdam, I believe, in the Netherlands. So it's not always easy to purchase and have it arrive. But Last year I was in Australia and I saw a huge amount of Australian dyers putting together kits for the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along. Some of them put together one of a kind kits, so they had lots of different kits, but you knew that what you were getting, only you would have a shawl that way. Other people did it, here are colours and there are four kits of this style, whatever, which I mean, it's totally fine. Um, I ended up putting together my own colourway from just a different place found some yarn, picked that one, it was five skeins of fingering, so I picked my five colours and purchased them together. So you can also do that. You can stash dyes, you can pick colours. We don't know what is needed for this year. I don't know if it's a fingering or a DK or a worsted weight shawl. Um, it is always a shawl, but I don't know what the yarn requirements are yet. But my sister and I planning to dye our yarn and so my sister will probably dye yarn for my mum as well and I'm really excited because yay I love dyeing yarn I've only just started and it's just playing and having fun and I don't have any more yarn to dye at the moment so I'll have to purchase more but I'm hoping that it's a fingering weight shawl so that I can do that if it's a DK shawl I'm not sure if I will just hold yarn double and dye matching skeins, or if I will source the DK yarn and dye it, probably that. Anyway, but that's coming up. I just saw yesterday my sister shared um, a link to his website that started talking about it, and I got very excited because it's only six weeks until we find out more information. Um, yeah. So in terms of new acquisitions, I've already showed you my awesome mug. Yes, the tea is now quite cold. Maybe tepid, slightly warm, not lukewarm. Um, but that is my only, I want to say real purchase. 
My next purchase, which I have done, was magazines. But all in Polish. So I actually subscribed to the Knitter magazine, um, which is a UK magazine and it's in English. But I was at the shops yesterday and I decided I would just have a quick look and see. I really like this one down here. So I just had a quick look and any pattern that had something that I was like, well, that would be fun. This is all about bags and kolebki. I like that one. Um, basically anything that I thought that looks like I would probably make that. I got it. so this one oh yes this one is Chudelkovanie is crochet Jeganie Makrama i Shitje so it looks like it's sewing macrame crochet and I don't know what Jeganie is is that knitting? Because that looks like it's knitted. So there you go, knitting crochet, mix of things. But this is the one that I was thinking I would have to make a little crochet. Because I also crochet. So cute little hedgehog. And then these ones as some winter, some autumn decorations may get made as well. Um, this one, what was in this one? Like I said, I just, if there was something that I was like, oh yeah, I would wear that, I just grabbed it because I needed, I mean, practice is good. Um, I think this one, I was debating a, I need a throw for if I'm going swimming. And so I thought a little crocheted something would be good for that. Anyway, I can't see quickly which one I was interested in. And this one, I think was similar. Oh, there are some really pretty. So that's the magazine. Like even just some nice summer lightweight. Because I'm realising here in Poland, things that are... There are days where I go, oh, it's going to be a warm day. But it doesn't get warm until midday or a bit later. And so I need to change and learn. Um, but the other thing I did get was a Moda sewing magazine, which I was also very excited about because I've been wanting some dresses. But also I have some friends like, oh, how pretty is that? Um, but I have some friends here in Poland who speak Polish and some English. Ooh, I like that too. Um, who, there are the silhouettes, um, who I'm going to help sew, to teach to sew. And so I thought it'd be really helpful to have a magazine where I could start to learn to read sewing, sewing patterns and knitting patterns in Polish. So that when I am teaching poles to knit and sew, which is not a, a job or anything, just friends who want to learn, um, I have some of the vocab for teaching them in Polish, not just in English. So that is my very exciting purchases of yesterday. But like I said, I've got some jumpers to finish up. I've got sea glass that I'm casting on in July, 13 days. Um, so I don't know when I'm going to cast on the Polish ones, but I should cast on one soon because I want to learn in the next week. Um, so that's it for knitting, sewing, crafting content today. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you want to head off right now, go for it. I will just talk a little bit more about life, but thank you so much for coming. And if you're interested, if you had fun today, please like and subscribe. I would love to get up to 100 subscribers so that we can have a designated URL and things like that. 
Um, so if you're interested, if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. And then you'll also know when I uploaded another episode. So bye if you're going now. Um, in terms of just things that are going on, I am obviously learning Polish. Um, I was just thinking last night as I was going to bed, I decided to pick up The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and read that in Polish. And when my husband came to bed, he was like, why are you still up? And I was like, oh, I got distracted. And I'd read half a page. And when I worked out words per minute, I was reading four words per minute. But in my defense, I was also putting words into my learning vocab app and looking things up. And so I understood what had happened that I was starting to remember some of the words that were coming up time and time again. Um, so I'm learning Polish. Um, obviously I'm wanting to learn knitting and sewing in Polish, but I'm also trying to read more in Polish and it is starting to click and get better. Um, but the other thing that I'm doing today um, is I'm going to be making relish and pickling eggplant. Um, it's a very common thing here in Poland that people will grow things and then preserve them for use throughout the year. Um, so we have heaps and heaps of heaps of cucumbers that are growing in our garden that we have been preserving as we grow. Um, but that is why my hands are so pink because I have last night peeled and grated beetroots to make relish and today I will put them together. Um, yeah, so that's what my day looks like for the rest of the day. I think my daughter's just peeping and starting to wake up so I will go get her up. Um, but thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me. Like I said, if you're interested, I actually moved the camera. Oh gosh, I've been putting my feet on the thing that the camera is resting on. And I just was like, everything looks different. It's all done. Um, anyway, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining me. If you are interested in watching my next episode, subscribe so you'll be notified when that is. Otherwise, I'll see you later. Bye guys.